What's going on everyone? This is another Chris Course with your host Chris and in this episode we are going to be covering source maps and webpack. So when you receive a bug in your code, the browser will give you two pieces of information. One, it'll give you the actual error message and two, it'll give you the line number that the bug is occurring on. So if you've ever had the issue where the line number that the browser gives you doesn't actually match up with the line number within your code, then there's a good chance that you could benefit from source maps. Let's head on over to the browser and I'll help you understand what source maps are, why we'd want to use them, and how to implement them using Webpack. All right, before I begin, it should be noted that I do have a Git repo in the description if you'd like to follow along. So let's start off by answering the question, what is a source map? So a source map is a file that ends in .map, and its main purpose is to provide a link between files that are within our distribution directory to files that are within our source directory. So files within our source directory, this is where we write code that we can actually understand. It's where we can make use of things like ES6 and SAS, while files within our distribution directory, these are files that contain our bundle code, our minified code, and things that are meant for the browser to understand. So if we look on over in the browser, you're going to see that we have an error message that says FSDA is not defined and that this error message is occurring on line 79 of bundle.js. So you may note that bundle.js, this is actually a distribution file. We don't actually write code in this. This is the file where app.js is compiled into. So it'd make more sense for the console to be saying where our error is in relation to our source file. And this is where a source map comes into play. If we had a source map here, it would be saying that our error is actually within app.js on line three. But since we don't have a source map, it's saying that our error is within our bundled file. So if we look at our h1 tag here, you're going to see that we have an error in regards to our CSS, and that this error is on line 14 of style.css. So if we head on over to our CSS file, or SCSS file to be exact, and go to line 14, you're going to notice that we don't actually have an error here. This actually deals with our font size, while line 14 of what's in the browser deals with our text alignment. So if we scroll down, you're going to see, yeah, there's our error. It's on line 21 um, within our intro container. So it doesn't actually make sense. We have some inconsistency here between what's being read in the browser and what we're actually coding in. So we use source maps to pinpoint these bugs so we don't have to search through our SCSS or app.js files because these things can get big. And when these things start to get big, you're going to be wasting a lot of time trying to find the bug within bundle.js and actually matching it up to the files you're coding in. So let's go ahead and add source maps using Webpack. So let's head on over to webpack config.js and you're going to see that I have a very simple setup here. Nothing we haven't covered before. We're using, we're making use of the extract text plugin and we're also making use of SAS and CSS loaders. So to make use of source maps, we are going to add a property and this property is called DevTool. Now this DevTool property, its main use is for source maps and you can see all the options within the webpack configuration documentation, which I already have opened here. If you want to look at this chart yourself, I do have a link in the description, which you can access very quickly. It'll, it might just take you a little bit of time to scroll down and find this chart since it's quite, it's quite far down. So you're going to see all the options with on the left hand side. We have things such as cheap source map, eval source map, and source map. Each of these differ based on their build speed, rebuild speed, whether or not they're supported in production, and the quality of mapping that they generate. So we want to make sure that we have a mapping to our original source code. So we're going to use one of these two on the bottom. And it would make sense for us to use eval source map, but what I've come across within my own experience is that when you make use of eval source map for your DevTool property, it doesn't actually work with the CSS loaders. So we're going to go ahead and make use of the bottom property, and that is going to be source map. So it should be noted as well that I am using Webpack 2. And since I am using Webpack 2, I do not need to prepend this with a hashtag as I normally would within Webpack 1. If I scroll up here, you're going to see that using a hashtag is recommended even for Webpack 1, but in Webpack 2, the hashtag is defaulted. So I don't need to use this, but if you're using Webpack 1, just know that you should probably add a hashtag at the beginning of this. So with this in place, I can go ahead and run Webpack within the terminal. And it's going to create a few files for us, and you can see it created our source maps. And if I click inside one of these, it contains a whole lot of gibberish, things we want to understand. But just know that it's creating all the mapping between Bundle.js and App.js. So if we go ahead to our browser, refresh the page, and look in our console, you're going to see rather than our error being on line 79 of Bundle.js, our error is on App.js line 3. So we can accurately pinpoint this, get rid of our bug, save it, 
And now if we refresh the page, what you're going to see, we, we accurately fixed our bug using a source map. And although it may not look like much since our file is so small at the moment, I guarantee you once your file starts getting bigger, it's going to be very handy for you in the future to make use of source maps. So now we can go ahead and fix our CSS, right? But if you look at our H1, we still have the error message saying it's on line 14 of our style CSS file rather than line 21 or 19 of our style.scss file. And this is due to the fact that we need to add some query parameters to our CSS and SAS loaders. So a query parameter is kind of like an option that we're going to be adding to our CSS loader. And to signify this, we're going to be adding a question mark and then inputting the parameter, the option that we'd like our CSS loader to have. So we want it to have a source map parameter. So we're going to add it like that. And we need this for our SAS loader as well. So we're going to add a query parameter and then assign it a source map. So this is all we have to do, and since we made a change within Webpack config.js, we need to restart Webpack. And this is going to compile, and it's going to give us accurate source map for our style.scss, or at least it should. So with that compiled, we're going to refresh the page, and you're going to see, there we go, it's reading from style.scss rather than style.css. So we can accurately pinpoint our bug, fix it where necessary, and rather than searching through this file trying to find the bug, we can just fix it like that because our console is accurately returning what line the bug is occurring on. So overall, source maps are very useful for pinpointing bugs. I highly recommend you use them within any project, otherwise you're just going to be wasting time trying to find that one specific bug using a lot of search commands in order to find it as well. And that's going to be it for this one, folks. A very brief tutorial on source maps, but very valuable nevertheless. You may have noticed that I did do this one a little differently than I have previously. This one I flat out did the whole recording from scratch from the very beginning. I didn't actually use a script or anything like I have in previous videos because I didn't feel like those previous videos were giving off an authentic feel like actually me talking to you guys straight up would. So I hope you enjoyed this version of a Chris Chorus and let me know which one you like better in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Later. Thank you.